Alright everyone, here we go again with some more of A Wickwiam for Innocence. I want to thank you all for the love and support you guys continue to show this series. Again, thank you so much. Let me tell you guys, this part always tugs at my heartstrings because it just... Like, we all know certain events happened already and then just to see it again from just a different perspective... It, it's just, we know what happens and it hurts. It always does and... I still love this game though guys, don't get me wrong, like that's the, it's one of the reasons why this game, this visual novel is so popular because the story is just so well written and it just brings so much drama and tragedy to it and at the end of the day it's gonna suck to see this game done with once I'm finished, you know? We have one more uh, part to go after this called Reincarnation, I'm not even sure if we can really play it per se, but anyways guys, we're gonna see this through and hopefully you all continue enjoy watching, so with that said, let's keep it going. All right, and we are back. What better proof of your tyrannical ways than your own isolation? Shut your damn mouth! You wretched man. How many times have you been betrayed? Have you found anyone you can trust after all your old friends proved you couldn't even count on them? Well, for God's sake, quit babbling already. Solitude will be our constant companion for the rest of your days. And should you let your guard down even for a moment, know that a hundred men lie in wait ready to plunge their blades into your back. Your attendants dream of the day they can sneak poison past your taster. Shut up! Ah, you poor pathetic child. How much misery and stress have you brought upon yourself because you let your dreams run amok? Clawing your way up into a world much, much too big for you. Be gone, damn you! <laughs> oh man, doing that laugh. <laughs> M my lord, I heard a huge crash. Ah, ah, ah. Lord, how many times do I have to tell you to stay out of my chambers? F forgive me, but I was afraid you might be in. I can take care of myself, damn it. Don't make me say it again. Y yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> To hell with you! We're nothing alike. I'm making their lives better, not worse. I am not a tyrant. I started relying on alcohol to rid myself of the phantom. When I was drunk enough, I didn't have to see anything. I didn't dream. I didn't have nightmares. And most importantly, I didn't have to think. There were times I couldn't be sure whether I was in my right mind. There were times I was so panicked, I wanted to scream my throat raw. But there was never a time I was safe showing that weakness. I knew from experience it would only put me at risk. I couldn't complain to anyone. I couldn't ask anyone for help. I couldn't believe in anyone. Odalon's dying words came back to me again and again. Stay strong and ever high of heart. What did it even mean to be high of heart though? Certainly I had nothing to be proud of. Not having spent my early years a filthy impoverished slum rat, not having spearheaded a violent revolution and stolen the throne, not this farce of a tale about me secretly being a noble. I hadn't been raised to be a lord. I hadn't been taught to have a proud noble spirit. That was likely what Odalon had wanted to impart upon me. The nature of a ruler. People automatically respect a man who is truly dignified and noble. They instinctively admire him, kneeling out of wholehearted honor. And that's what makes a true king. Not knowing the first thing about how to be that kind of man, I fell back on the only alternative that came to mind, forcing them to kneel beneath my iron fist. Two years under Odalon's tutelage was nowhere near long enough to instill in me the natural nobility I needed. Thus was I left to be tormented by this accursed phantom whenever alone and play the ruthless ruler elsewise. In my attempts to mask the fear lurking within, I grew louder and more ostentatiously contemptuous. Practically every other word out of my mouth was an insult. The old Jacopo was long gone, and Lord Barnier had crept in to take his place. It was gradual enough that I hardly realized it was happening, but now all I saw in the mirror was the face of a cruel, wretched man. I even came to hate my old self, think him foolish. What kind of vapid, nebulous dream was, was I want to go out into the world? What basis did I have for thinking myself any more significant than any other kid on the streets? And where the hell did I get the idea that having influence meant having freedom? I could barely even take care of myself. Where did I get off thinking a little power would let me protect the people I cared about? And what about now? 
What fundamentally did I even want now? What did I have to protect? Nothing. I was too far gone. There was no light to be found no matter how far I marched this path, and only a bottomless abyss awaited at my back. I had left myself with nowhere to return to. Before I knew it, nearly four years had passed since the revolution. But then, not a soul dared defy my will. I was surrounded by people who supported my every decision. Few of them genuinely agreed with me on everything, obviously. But no one could deny how much growth I had brought about, and so long as I continued to produce results, I would continue to have their outward support. As a trading hub, the city flourished, but the citizens were less than thrilled about the work I was doing. The poorest especially seemed to hold a great deal of enmity for me. But I was reaching the point where I couldn't manage on the support of the upper crust alone. Simply dumping sacks of coins into the streets wouldn't end poverty though, and increasing taxes on imported goods would undermine everything I'd built up. Lacking an actual solution, all I could do was work to make them feel like they were better off than they actually were. Fortunately, it was much easier to pull the wool over the middle and lower class's eyes than it was the better educated upper class. I started by building public recreational facilities which citizens had priority access to. And then I turned my eyes toward religion. About a year earlier, as a part of the city's expansion, a bridge was built across the river that served as the city's effective border. A church had still not been established in that new district, so I wanted to build one and gather a following. Conveniently enough, my predecessor had been in the process of building a second manor on the other side of the river, and with a little bit of work, it could easily be repurposed into a church. Once people started making use of the church, it would be simple to win their favor by making myself known as a generous patron. Faith was the ultimate blinder for the uneducated, and history showed time and again that religion could be a powerful tool in the right hands. But the high foreigner and merchant population in the city meant that no one particular religion had managed to take hold. The merchants especially tended to develop their own individual philosophies over the years, with few caring much for higher powers. That was a possible explanation for why the church had never had much sway in this region. There was, therefore, a chance the whole thing would just be a colossal waste of money. However, I had recently caught wind of a curious rumor. There was a nun serving at a small church at the far edge of town who had people come to refer to as the Saintess. Marie, come here, Sister Marie. Oh, what is it? We picked some flowers for you. Take a look, they're so pretty. Oh, why thank you. They're, they're beautiful. Ah! Get it away from me! <laughs> she fell for it. H hey now, how many times do I have to tell you it's not nice to trick people? You're too much fun to tease, Sister Marie. Th that's hardly an excuse, it's still wrong. I'm your big sister here, so you need to treat me like... Ah, uh, there's a bug on your dress. What? No, where is it? Get it off! Someone get it off me! Just kidding, there's nothing there. <laughs> Ah, get, get back here, you little rascals. So her name's Marie. Not quite what I envisioned of the so-called saintess. She seeks out orphans to take into her care and offers food for the hungry, shelter for the homeless, and the rest of the wary. And where exactly did the funds for that come from? She covers it all herself, supposedly. I highly doubt she has that kind of money just sitting around. Look at the building. It's practically falling apart. Wait a second. I get it. She makes use of all the church's resources to fund the charity. That is correct, my lord. Heh. <laughs> is she really so foolish as to not realize that's unsustainable? The locals are quite fond of her, but the same cannot be said of the priests and other nuns. Her work is causing them great financial stress. I'm not surprised. Shall I summon her? No, don't bother. I've seen more than enough. Yes, my lord. What? You have something to say? No, my lord. I simply find it curious you would take the time to come all the way out here when you have far more important work to attend to. N not that I would ever imply your judgment is anything other than impeccable, my lord. I just thought this saintess might be someone I knew. Pardon? But I was mistaken. They don't call her the saintess because she does God's work. They just call her that because she's a damn goody two-shoes. So much for words having actual meaning. I see. Lord Barnier? It's nothing. I'm heading back now. Yes, sir. Ah, oh, Marie! Marie! The giant man's here! 
Come on now, be polite. Good day, Murray. The kids seem to be doing quite well. Oh, you have no idea. So well, in fact, that this little hooligan found himself a whole handful of bugs. And goodness, he about scared me out of my skin. <laughs> a little mischief is a good thing. Their smiles wouldn't be half as bright as any other at any other orphanage. I'm not so sure about that. In any case, here's what I earned this week. No, no, no. I keep telling you that's not necessary. But you do accept teats, no? Y yes, but still. I know it's hardly enough to cover what you need, but please. N no, that's not what I mean. It's your money. You should use it for yourself. I have nothing to use it on. You'll put it to much better use than I ever could. Uh, Alright. Thank you. But try not to work yourself too hard, okay? I promise. Goodness, you really do make a lot in a week. I didn't realize carpentry paid so well. Indeed, I'm fortunate enough to have found good work. Maybe I'll leave the church and take up carpentry myself. Just kidding. You kid, but you would do quite well for yourself. You're strong enough to carry me at least. That took every last bit of strength I had. <laughs> Who is that man? Even with all the foreigners we get here, I've never seen anyone who looks like that. He is a frequent visitor to this church, though he does not appear to come for the charity. An oriental, perhaps? O oriental? My former consul told me of them once. Vagrants from the far east who supposedly look much like that man. How curious. He may be able to fool the nun, but I know damn well no carpenter in the world makes that much in a week. There's something fishy about him. Look into that man. Tell me anything you find out about him. Yes, Lord Barnier. Now, I'm heading back. In addition to the renovations for the church and gathering intel on the far eastern man, I made sure to keep an eye out for any unusual rumors or happenings outside the city's borders. Of all the reports I received, the one that caught my attention was word of a witch who lived by a lake. And here it comes. Ah, we finally come to this point, guys. Ah, this is gonna, this is gonna hurt. <laughs> it's gonna hurt emotionally. This lakeside witch supposedly had miraculous powers, allowing her to cure any ailment, and the effect was transmitted through her blood. This wasn't the first time I heard of the witch, an elderly woman who prepared this and sold medicinal herbs. But I hadn't realized she also traded miracles. It sounded like a bunch of snake oil to me, but she had allegedly cured a deathly ill young girl and started to make quite a name for herself. But on top of that, they also said that the sound of the witch's first cry had ended a years long drought in the village where she was born. This doesn't bode well. Why not, my lord? Try using your damn head once in a while, would you? Two competing denominations forming so close together, you don't see how that could lead to all sorts of headaches? The objective is to unify the people under a single banner, to which I then pledge my support and earn their favor. But that all becomes moot in their fate if their fate turns towards this witch. The people do love their heroes and miracles after all. It is quite an attractive proposition, I must say. I'm mocking them, you buffoon. I, I beg your pardon? The chances of it growing into something actually worth worrying about are slim, but better to snuff the flame out before it spreads than sit back and hope it burns itself out. Shall I deliver an order for her to cease operation then? That would be best. Actually, no. I'll deal with this personally. You just keep your mouth shut and do exactly as you're ordered. Nothing more, nothing less. Understood? Yes, Lord. To start, summon the man from the church. A few days later, I was standing face to face with the man in my audience room. He seemed much less personable in person than when I had seen him with the nun. Stone face, cold, and faintly smelled of blood. Not that I could actually smell blood, but there was an animalistic air emanating from him. That much I expected though. I knew before summoning him that he was anything but a respectable man. I take it you're the oriental man who's been seen buzzing around the local church of late? That would be me, yes. What of it? Who do you think you're talking to, you impudent rat? Show some damn respect. Apologies, I'm not very familiar with the local customs or language. Heh, <laughs> very well then. You're fortunate I'm such an understanding man. Now, for the reason I called you here. You're the one who killed that cart full of slaves four years ago, aren't you? So you know about that. Ha! I wasn't actually sure it was you, but now I have confirmation. 
Since then, one slave of Far Eastern origin has remained unaccounted for. I take it that would be you? That's right. You made one hell of a mess out there. Am I here to be punished? That depends on how our talk goes. If you think I'm going back to being a slave, you're fooling yourself. <laughs> I don't need any more damn slaves and I certainly don't want you as one. You're obviously not finding any respectable work being an ex-slave, so I take it you're still in the business of getting your hands dirty, are you not? I assume you're playing cat burglar or something living off whatever you can swipe from the nearest unlucky bastard. Correct. Isn't it comical then that you would choose God's sacred house to stretch your legs in, you filthy dog? I absolutely agree. I thought that would get a reaction out of you, but it seems you've got no bite in you today. Never mind, let's get down to business. You're going to help me out with a little something I'm working on. Help you with what exactly? Something that's going to make me a lot of money. And if you lend a hand, I'll make sure you're well taken care of. Along with the church you're so fond of, and the nun you've taken a liking to. That nun of yours has made quite the name for herself. Out in the city proper, people have started calling her the Saintess. They're right about that. She is. Ha! The commoners love their heroes and saints. They eat that rubbish right up. But saint or not, you can't simply create food from nothing. Her work is causing financial troubles for the church, is it not? It is, yes. If you help me with this, I'm offering you an entirely new church. One where she has complete control to do as she wishes. She'll make it into the biggest church in the city. She'll be able to help even more people, which should surely please her. What would you have me do? Jumping at the first whiff of scraps. You really are a dog, aren't you? I don't like conversations that overstate their welcome. Heh, <laughs> fair enough. Now let's get to business. Not far from here lives a witch whose blood has the power to cause miracles. Miracle blood? Sounds like a sham to me. You never know. They say the sound of her first cry brought rain to the land where she was born, saving the whole village from drought. And they say her blood has the power to cure any disease. I'll worry about the veracity of the rumors later. Right now, all I want is for you to capture her and bring her to me. Explain something to me, Lord. You said that if I helped you, the nun would be able to save more people than she does now. So how does capturing this witch accomplish that? I'm glad you know how to listen, dog. We'll be turning blood into a miracle elixir, which she will then distribute to ma patrons of the church. In exchange for teats, of course. Selling it, then. Selling isn't quite the right word, but if that's how you want to think of it, by all means. The commoner's beloved saint is handing out an all-powerful miracle medicine. They'll lap it up. And in turn, you'll make a fortune. Exactly. Money I can use to support her church. It'll be a boon to the city's economy as well. A single witch's freedom is all it'll cost for everyone to come out happy. So what will it be? Will you help? Or will I have to? I'll help. I have no reason not to. Decisive and a good listener. Excellent. Once I've captured the witch, where do I take her? I have a mansion set aside where your nun can run her church. There's an observation tower on the grounds. The witch will be kept locked up there to ensure we have a constant supply of blood. Okay. When do you want me to get her? You're just chomping at the bit now, aren't you? I thought you'd hesitate at least a little, but I guess it was foolish of me to presume to understand how a killer's mind works. All the resources I put into re investigating you and everyone close to you were wasted, it would seem. Do you even have a conscience? Don't act like you're any different. I assure you, I have a conscience. I wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't necessary for the growth of the city. No, I mean, you're as much a murderer as me. You would never come up with a scheme like this if your hands were clean. Haha! <laughs> the man's right. You're nothing but a murderer. How deep has the blood seeped into your hands? How many have you killed claiming their lives necessary sacrifices? And how many more will die for your ambition? Silent spirit. That poor, poor witch. Blessed with the power to perform miracles only to win her the attention of the villainous lord. It must be done. I don't have to explain myself to you. It's not like the old hag has long to live anyway. What the hell is villainous about having her spend her final days for the greater good of the city? So many lives would be improved at the cost of only one. You keep telling yourself that, boy. But what you're doing is no different than my banquets. You're cut from the same cloth as the man standing before you. And the same cloth as me. Be gone, Phantom. 
Watch your mouth, dog. Don't you dare insinuate I would ever condescend to your level. Damn it. That's the first time he's shown up with someone else around. At least you behaved yourself today. I'm pretty sure you're the smarter than most people I deal with. And you won't betray me either. Who knows how much longer he'll live though. Stay. Don't touch it until I say so. Don't quit pouting at me like that. You're the Lord's dog. Stand tall and proud. Alright, here you are. Drink up. Looks like it's safe. I swear so much for just get just to get myself a damn drink of water. When I heard about the saintess, I thought it might be you, but it was someone else. I never did get around to resuming the search after Odalon passed. There's no one around I can trust with such a sensitive task. Though it's probably for the best if I never do find you. We can't go back to the way we were before. Not that there's much chance you're even still alive. If by some strange chance you are still alive, what would you think of a man I've become? Several days later than originally planned, the Far Eastern man finally arrived at the mansion. Ah, this is going to be painful, guys. Ugh. At least we get to see uh, what he was really thinking inside inside that tit that uh, I was gonna say ticker inside that head of his. I had arranged to meet with him on the uppermost level of the observation tower in the church grounds. About time, the man appeared before me, a burlap sack slung over his shoulders. I had ordered he use the sack, afraid he might be foolish enough to actually drag the old woman all the way here. There's your witch. He threw a bag to the ground, causing the woman inside to let out a muffled grunt. It didn't sound like an elderly woman's voice, though. The stench. Tell me you didn't harm her, dog. I smell blood. You only instructed me not to kill her. Mistakes were made. Limbs were lost. Damn it. I cleaned up all the blood I got on me. No one suspected anything. You seem farther gone than I imagined. I should have been clearer in my instructions. Though I suppose it doesn't matter much. She's not going to live long either way. That you were able to immediately recognize it as smell of blood says quite a bit, Lord. You have killed before, haven't you? Enough yapping. She is alive, yes? Of course. Fighting back aside, I tossed my gaze from the man to the bag. I felt slightly sorry for the woman, but the feeling didn't last long. I had seen too many bloodied, mangled, I had seen too many bloodied, mangled bodies, both dead and alive, to be faced by one more. He crouched down to untie the bag. Ah! And a young girl came tumbling free. I, it can't be. As soon as I saw her. I knew exactly who the girl was. It had been four years, but no length of time could wipe from my memory those patches on her face. All the, or those breathtaking golden eyes. But why? How? What was she doing inside the bag? Why had I ordered her captured? How? How could I have done that? M Morgana! She was pale as death, shaking visibly. Confusion seized me, a cloud of swirling darkness forming before my eyes. The first thought that came to mind was that he had gotten the wrong person. I had only ordered her capture because I thought the witch by the lake an old woman. If I had known she was a young girl, let alone her, I would have never given the command. <sighs> but those thoughts led nowhere. I was simply trying to avoid facing reality, trying to place the blame on anyone but myself. I couldn't take back what had already been done. I couldn't change it. There she was, the girl who once won my affection, lying in a ball in the cold stone with an arm missing. It didn't matter how we had gone here, or what I had felt about her. There was no fixing what I had done. She looked up at me at the source of the muttering above her. Her eyes were opened almost frighteningly wide, and they wandered aimlessly unfocused to the point I wasn't sure she was seeing anything at all. I felt a tinge of madness in her. Is that you? The words spilled from her lips so soft they barely reached my ears. Hardly a, trace of beautiful, hardly a trace of the beautiful singing voice from my memory remained. 
It was hoarse and raspy. Every sound seemed laced with an unfathomably deep pitch black hatred for all existence. You... You remember me? Would she even be able to recognize me anymore? How could I ever forget? Morgana? She remembered me? The days we spent together? What kind of person I had been? The boy who had refused to give up putting ointment on her face? All our friends? Those horribly unromantic encounters at the graveyard? Her taking shots at me? Me taking shots at her? Did she really remember? All the time we had shared? How could I ever forget? All... All the pain... And humiliation you put me through! What? How could I ever forget the blood savage you so loved to hold? What? What, what was she talking about? Haven't had enough, have you? Leaving scars on every inch of my body wasn't enough for you. You haven't had your fill of my blood. I couldn't even begin to process the words I was hearing. They were little more than angry, meaningless shouts crashing to me. What the hell was she saying? Did she think I was someone else? Did she think I was him? That I was Barney A? No. No, Morgana. That wasn't me. I wasn't the man who had caused you so much agony. Look at the girl. You would claim you haven't caused her pain. You're the man who bound me, cut me up, called me a witch, and then tried to kill me. I haven't forgotten you even for a moment. No, I was the man who rescued you from him. I wanted to shout, but I couldn't gather the strength to force up a single word. Only gasps of air came from my lips. It was like I had been robbed of my voice. I don't care how, ma how much my father preaches forgiveness. That's the one thing you'll never get from me. I despise you with all my soul. I revile you with every fiber of my being. For every scar you gave me, I give you a lifetime of hatred. No, Morgana! When I finally managed to produce a sound, it was barely more audible than a whisper. In a frenzy, I made to reach out for her, when I noticed a pair of narrow eyes glaring at me. I was not aware you knew the witch lord. Huh? Know her? I don't just know her. She's Morgana. She's the girl I... This man, the Lord, he destroyed me, mind and body. <laughs> no! She's not wrong. That was another man. You have become that man to her. I am not Barnier. Do you hear yourself, boy? You're the rightful heir to the Barnier name, are you not? That's what you said when you stole the throne from me. This man ruined my life. How will you respond, boy? Will you say it wasn't you? Can you say it wasn't you? How will you convince her? She's clearly not in her right mind. Would she even understand it if you revealed the truth? Can you do that knowing it won't make it it won't make it through to her? Will you tell her you're nothing more than a slum rat, nurse her? That you deceived your way into power? That everything you built up over these years was all a lie? That you killed your former friends for nothing? That Autolon died for nothing? That you endured betrayal after betrayal for nothing? Do you have the spine to say it, boy? All the sacrifices you made, all the pain you suffered to make it here, could all come crumbling down the moment you do. What will it be, false lord? Is the girl worth it? Is sharing the truth with this half-dead girl on the brink of madness worth losing everything you worked so hard to accomplish? Make your choice. What's the matter, Lord? Y yes, I know her. Or, I knew her years ago. I see. What do you want to do then, Lord? You look sick. What do I want to do? Obviously. Why? On Earth? This doesn't change anything. We locked the witch up and proceed as planned. Did I make this choice? Congratulations, boy. Thus concludes your inheritance of the name Lord Barnier. Alright guys, I'm going to have to end the video here for today. Thank you all for watching. That really got- that really tugged at my heart. It really did. Like, we saw it coming and... To this day, it just sucks. Like, ah, man. 
But anyways, guys, we're going to continue on in the next one. So thank you all for watching.